Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube. And look who's here. I've only just met her today, her name's Bronte. How are you going? So um, I met Bronte online, as we do most days, when I'm trying to find victims, as I call it, to come here and have their hair done. Nothing <laughs> For our HairTube. And um, yeah, look, I like the challenge of doing someone's hair I've never met before, and today I'm gonna have that challenge. So we've had a chat. Bronte has told me she has curl. She wants to encourage her curl. And I'm just gonna spin it this way. She's got this little bit of highlight just here, and then the rest is natural. I actually thought that you'd color the hair because it's actually really nice, um, sort of chestnut red. And she said, I haven't. So I was like, wow. So we're gonna do some highlights over the whole lot just to give it the sort of like a break it up um, with some highlights. And then when it's worn curly, you'll see these little light bits poking out. So I haven't done a curly haircut for a while, so I'm excited. Oh, cool. I'm excited too. Yep. Um, I'm gonna get some color. We're gonna start that first. And then while I'm doing it, I'll explain to you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna head out the back, grab some color, and I'll be back. <laughs> You've watched these. So mix up some lightener. Let's have a chat about what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spin Bronte around just so I can explain a little bit better. So as you can see through here, we've got these sort of like grown out highlights. So I'm gonna start underneath. I'm gonna add some highlights throughout the back and the sides. The whole idea is to not make her blonde, but to just give a nice even highlighted effect throughout. The challenges that we face is she does have naturally um, warm hair. It is gonna throw yellow, uh, so we're gonna need to make sure that we um, address that with the toner at the end. So we'll talk a little bit about that close to the time. But I'm gonna start with the highlights in the back. Um, I'll put this on time-lapse, so for those of you who wanna watch me do that, you can. And for the rest, um, we'll speed it up and make this video a little more compact. Your bags were leaving today. What is taking you so long? Don't look back, we're on our way. Turn up our favorite song. We're going wherever the wind blows, and I'm driving right along the way. Forget the past, we'll be okay. Let's To find a place for us both to belong, to stay on track, just needed faith for us both to be strong, and all the stress will be erased at the end of the day. Take my hand, we'll be okay. Foils are in. Um, I just did, uh, so let, let's recap what I did. I just did horizontal sections, diagonal through the sides so that it doesn't look too stripy. I weave them. I used a weaving comb. I used a, um, a lightning powder by Matrix called Lightmaster with Bonder inside and 9% um, uh, 30 volt. I'm just gonna let that lighten up now. I'm not gonna put heat on it. Heat generally brings warmth out, so we'll avoid that. It's warm enough in here anyway, so we'll process that at room temperature. Um, we'll pull them out, and when you see us back here, Bronte and I will be ready to start uh, doing a haircut, and at that point, I'll also explain what I did with the toner, so I'll see you in a bit. All right, colour's done, time to do the haircut. So let's, um, I don't know how much you'll actually be able to see um, without a dry. I'm having some challenges with the lighting as well at the moment because the sun's setting a bit. So um, you probably see it more when, when it's dry, but the idea was we just did falls all through. Um, what I used as pre-toner, I use the So Silver Shampoo, which is an amazing uh, matrix shampoo. It's one of the best purple shampoos I think I've ever used, ever. It's very, very good. So I use that just to sort of like, just to sort of 
budge any type of yellow tones that might be present after lightning. And then I did a toner and I just did 10V. So I left that on for about 20 minutes. The whole idea was, and that's the full processing time for matrix color sync. So 10V and 30V, sorry, 30V, it would be 10V. Um, and that's again, I don't want it to be um, this white looking hair amongst this beautiful auburn red hair. I don't want that. I just don't want it to be orange. So I want it to be a, a luxe, very gentle, warm blonde rather than orange. And at the same time, I don't want it white because that would just look weird. Um, the idea now is to um, cut a length of the hair that I think would suit Bronte. Uh, you can see that's shorter in the front. I'm not going to go and cut it that short, but it does look a little bit mullet like because it is a bit longer in the back and that's fine. And it's not a bad thing. I actually, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's actually quite cool. Could say it's like almost like a short sort of wolf cut. Um, but the idea is to get a good base in there um, and then we're gonna try and encourage the um, curl with some layering. So I'm gonna spin around, we'll start with the baseline and then I'll talk to you about how I'm gonna layer it. Starting with the center party, like baselines aren't something that is uh, reinventing the wheel, <laughs> but at, at the same time, don't rush them. Make sure that they're done strategically um, with intention because um, I think sometimes we overlook the baseline of a haircut and just sort of point cut and chip into it. But I think that if we spend a little bit more time um, focused on, well, I guess the baseline is a part of the design of a haircut, so it deserves the same amount of attention as the rest of it, right? Oof. One of the things we get to see, well, I get to see and you guys get to see too watching it while I'm doing it is you can see how the curl reacts straight away yeah we just take that the right amount off and it just springs to life but one of the things i'm noticing about what was done previously is it actually has a lot of thinning which is not something that i would do in curly hair if we were encouraging the curl if someone is having their hair cut so they can be worn if they have curly hair and it's cut to be worn curly and straight you would try and find a balance of, of, of texture and it's gonna make it easier to style straight if you take some of the weight away. However, it will compromise how it wears. Um, well, the type of texture that you use to suppress curl obviously compromises the way it wears curly. Yes, we do do texture by allowing um, the hair to move in curly hair. We remove hair strategically so that we, it allows the hair to expand and stack and it gives it room to curl and move. Um, but texturizing on the ends and the mid lengths to suppress the curl. Um, even if it's intentionally done to suppress curl, I would never do on the top. It's only something I would do underneath um, just because it's just gonna make it frizzy and that on the top won't look good. Um, back's done, now we'll move on to the sides. Um, I'm just going to pull Bronte's hair back behind her ear to do the sides because the sides are already a little bit shorter than the front. And then I'm just going to cut it here. See this way, thanks, gorgeous. Just gonna hold it down onto her neck. You can see my guidelines there. Let me just do this so you guys can see the guideline. It's here. So just gonna tie that side into the baseline. Now, if we were to do this in hair that was long, like already longer in the front, obviously that's going to create the shape that goes from short to long. It's gonna to appear to, um, well, it's not gonna appear, in reality it will be longer in the front and shorter in the back. And this is a result of just cutting everything on a stationary guideline. So it's not concave, it's horizontal, and it's just cutting on a stationary guideline. Do the same on the other side, a little bit more on this side. Just be careful about pressure graduation and tension. So I use the wide, the wide end of the comb when I'm combing the hair down onto the the skin, perfect, simple enough. We just check for balance, that's good. And now it's time to release this color and curl with some layering. We're gonna um, now move on to the interior of the haircut. Actually, let me ask you that and please write in the comment section because I've heard people refer to it. Do you guys call this the interior or the exterior? I call it the interior. I've always said that this is the exterior of a haircut and this is the interior, but I have heard people say, this is the outside and this is the inside. So whichever, it doesn't really matter as long as you know what I mean. And so I'm moving on to the interior of the haircut because I believe that the ends are the exterior. And Bronte's hair naturally parts where it is anyway, but 
just for the sake of having some symmetry when I layer the back, I am going to start with the middle parting. I'm not going to cut it here. This is just so I can find um, the axis of symmetry in the back and just section up for the shape that I'm going to do in the back. And then I'm going to spin around so you guys can see. Yeah, that's good. I'm really happy with the colour. I was worried that it would be too gentle, but I did say I wanted it gentle, right? I didn't want to do stuff that was super heavy. Okay. So I've sectioned, I've sectioned the hair off, and this is what, something I get asked a lot is, just pop your head up, gorgeous. So where I section the hair off is where the head starts to round back. So some people just do it generically behind the ears, but what I find is it varies from person to person. The thing that's critical for me is you don't want to cut hair or layer hair into the back um, that actually doesn't grow into the back. So if this hair here is going forward or down, you don't want to be pulling this and layering it here. You're going to end up with this big weight line and you'll never get rid of it. So um, you can texturize it to oblivion. But you can see here that this hair is actually growing into the back. The other way you can do it is just like finding a part on the, on the um, hairline. If we actually comb Bronte's hair to the side, so let's just mess it up a little bit so it's not so obvious. If we comb this to the side, just like we do on the back, and we push forward, you'll see that it, that's hair that grows back, that's hair that grows forward, so you can do that as well. Um, that's like a, a good generic way of doing it. I still like to look at where the, the head rounds, and look, often that might actually be the case, where you do it that way, the head will round that way, um, but not always. What that does tell you though is the hair that only grows into the back will fall into the back when you do that. Explained why I've parted the hair there. Now what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of time to understand layering removes raw weight. How much weight do we wanna take out of the ends um, and how short do we want it to be so obviously we can adjust the length that we lay the hair by our projection and we can also um, adjust how much weight we use by the angle that we choose so I'm already identified that you can see here that the crown's got a fair bit of jump in it and I'm going to start and I always proceed on the side of caution when cutting curly hair because curls are like fingerprints they're all different and I've I've seen hair and gone, yeah, I know what this is gonna do. And then I'm like, oh, oh wow, okay. So I'm not gonna go gun home because I wanna make the interior, I wanna make the interior of this quite short, but I'm gonna go steady, steady. Um, because it needs to factor in that the hair is gonna shrink when it curls, and as it does, that's gonna make the hair look short. You don't actually have to literally cut it really short to make it look short. So this is all about gauging how much the hair is gonna spring back on me. Just doing some nice layering at 135 degrees. And I'm going to do one whole side because just doing one little section isn't going to really tell me that much. And believe me, this is a better option um, to recut it once, twice, maybe even three times to get the length just spot on than having an uncomfortable conversation with your client about why you chose to do it short and how good it looks. Right? That's good. So it sprung up a fair bit. I actually think that's quite a good length. So... Good guess ads. This is just going to be the guide for the length. So I'm going to continue this all the way through the back section on both sides. Making sure that if the hair reaches from underneath, you cut it into this section. If it doesn't, that's fine. We'll get to it in a bit. And then I'm gonna spin Bronte this way. So you can then see me do the other side from the back. See me project it this way. So even though this falls out, I still pick it up, bring it up there. If it doesn't reach, that's fine. And I'm always using my previous section as a guide. We don't want to cut into our guideline either. It's pretty straightforward stuff. I think the special stuff comes when I share with you how I'm going to actually release the curl. This is just creating basic shapes. So we're going to check balance here. That's good. Now we haven't done any of the hair on here, this is just from the top. That's great. Now we're gonna move into this section here and address that. It's good, looks really good. The color looks great. That looks amazing. Back's done. So before we move on to the sides, I'm just going to continue through the back. Let me just push it. Keep moving you. Yeah. Just moving the back. So we're going to continue bringing this hair into the back. 
we're over directing it. The reason why we're over directing it is because we don't want to cut holes on the sides. People don't have hair growing out of the sides of their cheeks, their ears or their face. Well, they do have hair growing out of their ears, but not enough to blend with their head. And um, Bronte certainly doesn't have hair in her ears that I can see. So if we don't over direct it, we end up with a big hole in this area here. The hair looks quite sparse. And we just wanna cross check that horizontally. That's good. And now we're gonna repeat that on the other side. head forward for me gorgeous thank you so I'm just gonna go over what I did again always like to yeah it's good it's great either watch it from this side wish I had you can see me over directing it from here and bringing it back to meet the last section that we did. Don't drag the hair on the top down. Make sure that you're projecting it on and drag this down, you end up with a weight line. We keep doing that until we run out of hair. Looks like we have already. As I said, there was some existing layering that front. Just cross check horizontally. Bring this all back, just chin down a little bit gorgeous. Sorry, thank you. Yeah, that's good. Just check this last section on the side here. You can see those highlights through the side are starting to pop out now it's dry. Let's spin you around. We'll move on to the next step. It's looking really good. Okay, moving on to the back again. So we've seen where um, our layering is on the top. So again, we're just gonna move the hair that doesn't grow into the back out of the way because what we wanna do now so we actually want to come down towards 90 degrees. So we obviously cut this at 135, and now we want to actually deal with the hair down here. So it can be done a couple of ways. We can do it um, between our hands like this. Some people prefer to do it like this. So I, the reason why I prefer to do it like this is because, and let me show you from the side, is I actually like to watch the hair fall out because that's the hair I don't want to touch. That allows me to see my guideline on the top, which is here. And then I can just take this hair out here in the middle and into the top we go. And you can see there, you can see here that that's the effect that it's had. So it's just about adjusting um, the, the middle, well, the, 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 the middle part of, of this haircut by connecting our length on the bottom to the length we did on the top on the angle that we need to create the shape we want. Just gotta remember that every time we cut something, it, it, there's, there's a, it causes something to happen. In this particular instance, the layering is causing the hair to become more curly and removing the weight. And we just have to choose um, the right technique to cause, to create the cause that we want. So in this particular instance, I, I like to do it this way because I've got my guide on the top, I've got my guide on the bottom, and it's just about taking the hair out that's in between. Now I've chose to do it at 90 degrees, because I want it to be flat, because I can see that there's a lot of hair here and it's gonna stack outwards. You might wanna do it at graduation, at, 90, at uh, below 90 degrees. So you wanna create fullness and, and body and, and shape through the ends. Um, again, it's just about choosing the right shape um, to create the haircut, or sorry, the right technique to create the shape that you want and making sure that obviously that's aligned with the, the things that your clients requested. And as I said to Bronte just before, there's actually not a lot of hair to cut off. It just has to come off in the right places to create the movement and, and encourage the curl. So there's not a huge amount of hair being taken off um, here, but you can see already that this is starting to have this like effect in here. And now we just need to continue this all the way around. Again, we're over directing this to the back. There'll probably be a fair bit that'll come off the side here. Well, not a fair bit, but more than in the edge at the back, maintaining that 90 degree angle because I want to create an oval shape. I want it to be, I want it to be lean and sleek because I'm, I'm confident that the voluptuous nature of the hair and the curl naturally is going to build my shape rather than having to create a, a graduated shape that's going to actually build, build weight and shape out from the bottom up. Yep, that's that done on the side. I knew there wouldn't be a lot 
to cut in there. I'm going to do it on this side, just for the people who prefer to do it this way. I'm going to show you how you can do it from underneath. You can lift the hair up. It has the same effect, just how you feel more comfortable controlling the hair to hit the angle that you need. A little bit extra hair on this side. Bronte told me that her, um, her haircut's growing out from a pixie cut. So I think the fact that it's grown out this well um, is actually quite remarkable. So kudos to whoever did it. If your haircut lasts this long, um, especially when it starts very, very short, that's pretty impressive. And that's all that. There was more on that side. Now again, we're just gonna pull this back head back for me, gorgeous. I'm just gonna rake this back with our fingers. And we just want to visually make sure that we're balanced. So if I spin Bronte this way and pull this back, you can see that here we're balanced. Here we're going to texturize to encourage all this curl and soften some of that weight. But before we do that, I need to address the shape in the front. So something I talk about a lot is ensuring that we choose the correct projection so that the hair falls with the shape that we want. So what does that mean? The further we project the hair away from zero, the softer it'll fall when we cut it. And obviously if we hold it at natural fall, it's gonna become more solid. Well, it's gonna be solid, exactly. So then all the way along there, we're gonna have different levels of softness of so how the hair either falls heavy or soft until we start to get into the layering where it's gonna fall very wispy and light. So obviously curls, as I've said already, it's not ideal to actually use a lot of texture. So the reason why this is important for curls is by choosing the right projection, it'll allow us to create the hair to fall, well, it'll allow us to make sure the hair falls soft without relying solely on texture. It doesn't mean that we won't use any, but we won't have to rely on it solely. So I've taken a horizontal section through here and I'm going to project it. So if this is 90, sorry, let me rephrase that. This is 270, this is 315, and this is 360. The reason why I do that is because it gets confusing. So I always say zero is here and 360 is here. So we've got 180, 270, 90, all relative to the hairline, of course. So I'm gonna project this just above 270 because I want it to be well into the layering space. So this would be like 225 or 235 rather, is that right? 180 and 45, 225. And then I'm not gonna, again, I'm not gonna take a huge amount off, but what I'm gonna do is make sure that I bring everything to that point. So this is one horizontal line. If the hair falls out on the side, so be it, but you watch what happens with curly hair when you drop it. Maybe not so obvious in this section, but wait till I take the next section because I'm almost certain that it's gonna fall in. And you watch how the curl just wants to flick and it'll come back off the face. It's, it's actually a very powerful thing when you understand how to um, manipulate the hair and, and make it do the things you wanna do without having to rely on um, texturizing. So again, 225 projection, bend in between my fingers, horizontal, oh, I've gotta go a little bit higher, missed my guideline there. Horizontal line, bang, there's my guideline. And then I'm gonna make sure I pick this hair up from the sides and I've gotta project it and elevate it up to the same plane, 225 degrees. If it falls out, that's fine. Don't go hunting for it, it doesn't reach, it's too short already. And we just got a little bit on the corner and now that I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of texture to create separation. So this is not doing anything other than creating channels so that the hair can move. And when we pull this off her face, you'll see how it just beautifully encourages this movement and curl. I can already see it wants to move back because short hair directs long hair. That's a golden rule of cutting hair. You can already see it starting to flick back. And when we just head back for me, gorgeous, just pull it back with our fingers nice and gentle. And then we we'll push it forward. You can see already it's starting to really encourage the curl, almost like goes with the shape of the face. Now we just, as we did on the back, we've created this. Now we just got to um, join this to our length on the, on the side. So again, using horizontal lines. We're going to connect that short, I guess you'd call it like little bangs or short, um, Layers, you can see that beautiful shape it's starting to create. And we're just gonna project our hair 
around 90 degrees now, or sorry, 270. And then you'll see that that hair just falls into it. And we're going to connect those two together. So that's our baseline. And then as we did before, we're just gonna give it some texture. And you can see now that connects perfectly. And again, like I did in the back, you choose where you wanna connect this. You can connect it right down here if you want it to be really short and fall away, or you can connect it more modestly and just join it together. So just like I did in the back where we laid it, we did our baseline first, we chose our length on the top, connected the two. I often do that. It's called, some people call it mapping, but what it does is it eliminates all the guessing from my cutting. So I'm like, what are the most important parts in the back? I want cheekbones. So that's where I want this piece. What do you want the rest to do? I want to slightly open up the jawline, but I don't want to expose it completely because I felt that's how it looked last time where it looked really short in, in, the, in the front and then long in the back. So we're going to be more modest with that transition and make it more subtle and just connect them together on this horizontal plane at about 270 degrees. It's not a lot of hair, but you watch what it does. It makes a huge difference. There's our guideline there. And just connects it perfectly. Beautiful. Now it's time to dry it off very gently. We need to do some texture, but we can see already. So you can see before, if you went back, it sort of looked like this was disconnected. It went chunk and then it just dropped. And just by taking out that little hair, it just pulled, a pulled the hair a little bit back. It's blended it in. This is gonna jump up, shows off the jawline. Perfect, but it, we don't get that effect where it just looks like it's too much like this as it was when we began. So if possible, before we do this technique, it's better to let the hair dry naturally. Now, we don't always have time to do that in the salon, so before we put product in it, we're just gonna use a diffuser just to very gently take some of the moisture out, and I'll explain why. You might wanna turn your volume down because this is gonna get really loud, and then um, turn it back up when I turn this off. So without product, I just very gently diffuse the hair. Now, it's not 100% dry, but it's dry to touch. Then I grab myself a paddle brush. Now, I know people out there with curly hair are thinking this guy is a lunatic, but I actually do brush it out, and I'll explain to you why in a second. Because the hydrogen bond is temporary, so we can reignite the curl in a second um, as soon as we apply water with a water spray. However, I'm not confident texturizing hair that is curly as in naturally dried curl because it's inaccurate. I cannot be guaranteed to do accurate texturizing when the hair has curl in it. So what we do is we don't straighten the hair, but we want to try and pull some of that natural movement out of it so we can identify weight lines that we may want to soften, which is what we're about to do. Oh, that's good. Now, um, some curl like really, really curly textured hair may not be suitable to do this, but in um, Bronte's case, it is. Now, I'll spin her around in a sec. I'm gonna go back to our original sectioning. So where we sectioned the back off and we left the front out. And I'm gonna comb that there, bring it inside. I'm not gonna use clips. And what I wanna do, um, what we wanna do is we wanna release some of this curl and I'll show you why. It's inevitable that when we have naturally occurring elements um, that make the hair shorter, like her crown, that we're gonna get inconsistencies. You can't see that when the hair's wet and you can't see when it's curly. So this is why I brush it out a little bit. It's also gonna give you a good indication as a hairstylist. And again, you need to use, th this is not like a blanket rule that you just do it on anyone. You need to obviously use your experience and say, okay, is this person's hair suitable? So, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to go back using horizontal sections, working between our short now and our short point for our layering and our baseline, and start to work horizontally and release some of this curl. So I'm gonna start with a rectangle section through the middle. We're gonna elevate the hair at 90 degrees because as we wanna um, control the way the hair falls around the face, so we choose the right projection to avoid texture. If you texturize hair close to zero, you're gonna make it chunky. So I'm gonna elevate the hair um, at 90 degrees and I'm gonna very gently, strategically create separation. 
Then I'm gonna again elevate it relative to the scalp at 90 degrees again. And we're gonna remove more weight. And then again, and then you're gonna see this start to release the curl. Look at that, compared to here, look at this already. Look how soft that is, it's beautiful. Head forward for me, gorgeous, thank you. Horizontal section on the side, so we're gonna use half of what we used in the middle. So we've got half of that on each side. And again, project it at 90 degrees. We're gonna very gently start to remove some of that weight, encouraging that curl until we're happy with how the hair is looking. Don't worry about underneath here, we'll get to there in a second. I think it's looking good. Now again, the same process is we split that section in half, we comb that out of the way. Now we're incorporating a little bit of the side. Again, projecting that at 90 degrees, be careful of removing too much weight here. I'm still projecting it to the back. Be careful about removing too much for the reasons why we over direct it when we layer it. If you take too much weight out of here, it'll feel and look very shallow and sparse over here. And we don't want that. Good, you need me right now or? No, no, sorry. I'll call you back, I'm shooting YouTube. That was Michelle. Um, the world stops when my wife or my daughter calls. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, again, we wanna make sure we're over directing this to the back because we will remove too much out of the side and it will end up being very sparse and won't look very nice. Look a bit thin. We wanna create curl that moves and it's voluptuous and bouncy, but we don't want it to be bulky and thick and cumbersome and hard to style and frizzy. And it is very, very hard to find that right balance. And the balance comes from choosing the right shape for the length, choosing the right projection to make sure you create the right shape, and then making sure you enhance it with the right amount of texture and leave thinning shears or thinning scissors or texturizing scissors in your kit for curly hair, please, for the love of God. Unless that is, of course, that you want to um, completely suppress the, the curl and, and for it to be worn really hyper textured and straight. Now I'm moving into the top of this. Still doing the same thing. Very strategic, very uh, cautious. I don't want to overdo it. If we do too much, we could actually um, make this shape collapse and then we'll, all that layering that we put in will all come undone. Now I know that people will be saying, well I could probably do that dry. You're right, you can. I just do it this way and I've explained the reasons why and I just feel like um, it's not a big deal to grab a water spray and some product to curl your client's hair and to style it with a diffuser um, after this has been done. It's not a big deal. The other thing I find is um, we, don't wanna, we don't want our clients walking out the door with little pieces of hair falling out of there. Um, off their head either, like onto their clothes and they might be going to meet a friend for coffee or lunch and then they're gonna get hair in their, their lunch and that's, that's never nice. You can see what's starting to happen here. Oof. Oh yeah. All right, let's do this side now. I'm gonna start again. Remember we start in the middle, so I just take that in half. And we're going to start here, 90 degrees from the scalp. Take some of this weight out. Now, what I mentioned here is what I need to be careful from. I don't want to have to go and um, make the other side shorter again. So I need to be careful about how much weight I remove in this particular section because there's the crown falling in this section. And you can see how much that's jumped up already. And for us to create a balanced haircut, if we go and make that lighter by removing too much weight, it will actually get shorter again. And then we'll have to go and make this shorter. I haven't done that. I think that looks quite balanced and good. Moving to this side again, starting again, like we have the other sections. And you don't generically just texturize each section. Straight away, this side doesn't need as much. If you guys are watching this video, if you answer the question right, and the question is, 
why does this side require less texture than the other side? And it's got to do with how the hair's worn. Um, I'll send you out like a hair tube tissue or something. So make sure you, uh, you put the answer to the question in the comments. Why does this side require less texture than this side? Those paying attention will already know. The only thing that I haven't done is remove hair from right underneath in the nape because I can't get to it. This is where we use some sectioning. You can see our highlights under there. And we're just going to very gently slice hair away to create separation, to create looseness because we don't want it to be this big heavy piece of hair underneath. I always project the hair vertically when I do this. So this way, and then try not to um, take too much hair out. We do want to have some fullness here to support the shape. I guess um, you, you could section the hair like I just have um, to do the previous technique. I like to do it as I did because I can see all the hair falling down and I can actually see how it's falling without the hair being clipped away. You can put this back, that's looking really good. Now I just need to do the top up here. So we're gonna pull this horizontally again at 180 degrees and you need to be very gentle up here. We don't wanna go and take too much out. Then it's time to grab a water spray, rehydrate this hair with water, choose a beautiful matrix styling product that will encourage the curl and the movement. I'm not adverse to mousses. I think sometimes mousses can be great. I just don't want the hair to dry, crunchy, where Bronte won't be able to go and run her hands through it and touch her hair or tuck it behind her ear and, and then pull it out from behind her ear and move the hair around. I think sometimes for shorter curly hair that it isn't going to move as much purely because the length determines how much the hair is gonna move and flow. I think mousses are better suited, um, but um, we need to find a combination of using something for hold like a mousse and then moisturizer that allows the hair to be supple and, and be pushed around without it going frizzy. Because we know as soon as we put our hands in hair that has mousse in it, it gets frizzy really quick. This again, just providing room for the hair when it's curly to separate or give it room to expand so it doesn't stack out too far. Be gentle when you're working with, with um, curly hair, or sorry, be patient so you, that you can be gentle because when you're combing it in many different directions and you're cutting um, little pieces of hair amongst long hair, inevitably it's gonna get a little bit knotty and we don't wanna to be too rough. Head back for me, Gorge. Give it a shake to keep your head there. I'll just give you a bit of a blast. Just with some soft, cool air. A little bit of hair on your face. And then let's have a bit of a squeeze with no product. It's had me combing it in 10 different directions. Mm -hmm. You can see just how beautifully the hair stacks now. Go the other way. How that sits in there. Beautiful. I'm gonna go and grab some product. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna put in. I'll be back in a sec. Looking good, really good. It's okay. I've just given it a bit of a blast to get some of the cut hair out. Now, I did say we're gonna use a water spray and I did bring one that's over here. Let me grab it. I'm not gonna completely saturate the hair again. It's just not necessary. So I'm just gonna give it a little spray. Just close your eyes, Gorge, please. Now this is for one thing and one thing only. Most products that we use these days are water soluble and they require some type of moisture for us to be able to get them through the hair and move them through the hair. So I'm just going to wet this hair down just so it's not completely dry. And you could actually just wet your hands and just scrunch it in, right? Then we're gonna do the same because one of the things that I know about curly hair, and one of the things that I know I could retire if I invented it, was if I could, if I could in 15, 20 minutes replicate what's just happened here in slowly drying or potentially Bronte being able to dry hair naturally at home, I'd be loaded. We can't, we use diffusers, and you gotta remember diffusers are putting artificial heat, they're putting um, uh, 
air through the hair, even though we turn it down, and it's gonna create this like less than ideal look. I think that we can all vouch for naturally dry curls are the best. So not too much mousse. Golf ball size of mousse, not too much. And we're going to use, so this is volume builder, and we're going to use smooth setter. Smooth setter makes everything better. And we're gonna be use just a little bit of that. Now this is probably more than I need, but I'm gonna mix it. I'm actually, it's something I do a lot, and Matrix products are great for this. You can make your own. So I'm using smooth setter and the mousse together to give me the product I want. And I'm gonna rub it into my hands. Some's got on the floor. I will have to clean it up. And now all I'm gonna do is I wanna gently work this into, head back for me, Bronte, into around the hairline first. And I'm only gently scrunching it in. So I wanna put it in and around the hairline. Then I'm gonna bring it in through the interior, in through the back. And you can already see how curly this is going. We don't want it to be like over the top curly. We want it to look like it's been dried naturally. So we might be able to just leave this go with just scrunching these products in by themselves. So here, I've still got some on my hands. So I'm just going to like with my fingers, I'm just gonna scrunch that in here and lift it up and really encourage the curl. I'm gonna pull this down underneath because you can see that it's a, it just sucks it back in and makes it look super short. One of the things that as a young hairstylist I used to be really bad at is, is anticipating the amount of uh, shrinkage or contraction you'll get in hair that's curly when you cut it. And it's because curls are just an unpredictable medium. I've done lots and lots of curly hair in my time and they're literally like fingerprints are all different. I'm going to blast the hair. Now I'm gonna pull this towel out, a little bit of warm hair. And this is more to just settle down those little flyaways that we, we've got. Head back, Gorge. Colour's looking good. Really good. And so once I've, because mousse does get crunchy, so I'm gonna like dry it in a little bit, and then we're just gonna use some of the smooth setter to finish off. Does it feel good? Yeah, it's amazing. To re-release their Vavoom spray, which was one of my favorites, and this has gone back to the OG packaging, which I love. So to finish, we just got a little bit more um, volume builder. Now I use this to settle down flyaway, and again, this has got alcohol in it, so be, be sparing about how much you use it. And I'm just sort of scrunching that in to frame those curls around the front. And we just wanna put those in. We're almost using this like a molding paste. And then we're gonna use some of the Vavoom freezing spray, just head like this one, Bronte, like just like this first, and eyes closed, just come forward a little bit. So just do that so I can spray on the inside here. And then we're gonna do that the same on the other side. The thing that I concentrate on the most, guys, and I've said it a lot in my videos, is we spend all this time, you know, focused on styling the back of the hair. I like to really make sure that the front is on point all the time. So I spend a lot of time um, making sure that, you know, with my fingers, we can like move the hair like this, we can spray it into shape. Now we've got that showing off the cheekbone there and pulling back. If I want it to be coming forward a little bit, we can. And then just a little bit of spray in the back, just for a bit of hold. Um, and if you want it to be pedanti, I mean, people aren't gonna meet Bronte from, oh, hi Bronte, nice to meet you. So focus on styling the front. And I, th I think curly hair, it's okay for it to be, I describe it as like organized mess. Like it doesn't have to be perfect, but what I'm getting at around the front is it does. You've got to make sure this, the front part is, is um, done. It's a sexy mess. Yeah, <laughs> like organized mess, yeah. So let's just spin Bronte around so you can see what I've done here in the back. You can see it really builds the shape out nicely. Lots of curl. And again, like I've just um, scrunched that product into it after you're putting a, a little spritz of um, moisture back into it, but absolutely, if we were to shampoo, condition, towel dry, put the product in, comb it, let it dry naturally, and then once it gets touched to dry, start to build the shape like this, it will dry a thousand times better. We're done. I think it looks fantastic. It looks amazing. I think one of the things I want to highlight, a couple of things I want to highlight about this look is, look, there's a bit of hair on the ground, I'm not, I'm not lying, but 
don't always have to go and cut a heap of hair off to get the shape we want. Sometimes um, we could sort of look past that and, and maybe be in a mindset of if I don't take enough off, um, will my client think I haven't worked hard enough or you know, they'll be like, oh, you didn't really cut that much off. But just remember, you, you're being paid for what you leave behind and you're being judged for what you leave behind, not for what you cut off. And I think this is a really good example of, yes, we just did some very simple um, foil highlights. We weave them. I took the hair off in the right places. I wanted to balance up the length in the back. It was too long in the back. And then I used some layering, just release the curl. And, you know, I was like, it's fantastic. You happy? I am so happy. As I the amazingly Bronte's happy. an actress. That's why she's... She's showing you like. <laughs> she said to me just before we rolled the, the beginning of the outro. She goes, my my director's probably going to say, why didn't I have my hair done before the last the last production? But um, I'll put her in the description actually where you can watch some of Bronte's stuff. So she's pretty talented. She can sing too. Oh, thank you. You can. You're a good singer. Apparently, I can sing, but I, I ain't going to. Uh... Oh please. No. <laughs> I need to be a couple of scotches in, get the raspiness in my voice, okay, and then, then away I go. Now, I, I, as as a singer, I make a great hairdresser. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, recapping on what we did, um, we did some highlights. We used um, Matrix Light Master with 30 volt. Uh, we lightened that up. I didn't initially process it with heat, but because of the last section uh, on the top was the last one I did. Obviously, it was a bit slower. That's for a few reasons. The lightener has been in the bowl for a bit, so I actually got a hair master and I isolated it just on the top. That allowed me to rinse it all together, took her over to the basin, um, we cleansed it um, using, um, what did I use? I actually used, um, um, it's called Bleach Finder, it's a matrix product, so that helps us make sure we rinse all the colour out correctly so that before we tone, uh, we don't want to have any residual lightener in there affecting our toner. Once I removed it with Bleach Finder, we then used the uh, Unbreak My Blonde Shampoo. I then did So Silver. So Silver is just like a pre-toner. It's amazing purple shampoo for blonde hair. Try it if you haven't. And then we did uh, Color Sync 10V. Left it on for the full uh, 20 minutes. And um, you had a little bit of a snooze at the basin. And then brought you back, did a great haircut. Uh, again, using strategic horizontal layering techniques, we just used some volume builder and a little bit of uh, smooth setter and just rehydrated the hair with some water as you see and trying to replicate a naturally dried hair at home because when people come in and they say, I want to have wash and wear, wash and wear is not shampoo, condition and spend 25 minutes styling the hair. It has to try and find an option where people can actually get out quickly. And that's something I try and offer with my clients is versatility in styling, which is why I do a lot of dry hair cutting, which is why I wrap dry my long hair because as you've seen from my long hair, um, you can just wrap dry it. You can put a little bit of product in the front, spray it like I spoke about. Uh, with Bronte styling, it's focusing on shaping around the face and away people can go without having to go, oh my God, what, what have you done? Have you not even done your hair today? It's just a beautiful, natural, wearable street look. And then obviously styling can be done to enhance it, but shouldn't be a prerequisite. So I had a good day today. It's Easter Monday here in Australia. Happy Easter, Happy Easter wherever you are in the world. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for giving up your Easter Monday. No, thank you. Most people chose to have the day off and do nothing. And you came and had your hair done and hung out Good with me. We well, already were before you got here. So. Oh, David, no, you <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. If uh, you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, make sure you share this with someone who you think may benefit because um, one of the things I've always said is I don't think I'm an influencer. I'm sharing my knowledge and encouraging others to do the same. And the uh, famous Dalai Lama once said, share your knowledge because it's one way to immortality. So that's what I try and do. Words of wisdom. I don't think I'm good at keeping, I don't think I'm qualified to give advice, but that's my two cents worth. Take care, guys. I'll see you again soon. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Bye.